Yes, we have found some zebra, a lonely wildebeest, and I think hopefully in the next little while also some impala and some kudu are going to start showing themselves onto the screen. It's just a very interesting point in the change of season. Hello, boy. He's the only lonely one around here, probably feeling a bit left out because he doesn't have all that much company with everyone else around here. Are you... Uh, I had some hope that maybe he was going to start rolling in the mud over there or have um, a nice dust bath, but it seems like he decided against it. He's feeling a bit shy. I think the zebras are being a bit over-empowering and have pretty much claim this uh, mud wallow to themselves. I think there are about maybe 10 different ones around here. And they've all taken their time to inspect us, look at us, and then go straight back onto the water. Just, I think more than drinking, what they're doing is actually feeding on the grass that's not too far from the water. Because probably that grass is a lot more palatable, it's nicer to eat, it needs green, greener in comparison to all the grass that's around us. Very interesting, you know, um, pointer of the change of season. As everything starts getting drier, then uh, views like this should become a bit more common. A lot of more animals congregating around pans, different species all together. And obviously all of the yummy grass that's around the, um, the pans is the first thing that's going to start getting eaten. Because it's probably one of the last soft, uh, very nutritious sources of food all around. I think we've got the one looking at us. I think she is a pregnant female very big belly oh and she's carrying four red-billed ox peckers which is a pleasure to see because i haven't seen them for a bit hello guys are you guys busy at work today just look at how nicely they come through all that hair just looking for all the ticks feels like they have a perfect um sink in between all of them so we've got now one two three four Maybe a fifth zebra coming in. But like I said, it is funny because I was doubting that they would come and drink. Cause zebras are normally quite fuzzy also about the water that they drink. But as the water sources become um, less available to them, then they're going to have to pretty much make do with what, which, uh, yeah, with what is there. But for now, I think they can still afford to be picky. We can see all those tails moving around. It's almost like all of the fans trying to make sure that all of the flies go away from wherever they are because they don't really want them sitting on them I think the oxpeckers are also doing them a favor Rishi Kesh, uh, I'm not too sure how many stripes they have. Um, I think it varies from zebra to zebra and it depends what you want to count. So I would imagine if you count from their ankles over the way to their muzzle, you would probably count more than a hundred stripes. That is, if you count one single color. If you count both colors, maybe you'll have double as much as that. But I'm not too sure. If there's uh, an average, so if you guys find that there's a study that's been done about it, I would really like to read about it. But as far as I know, nobody's. there are a lot of theories about maybe why they have stripes and what function the stripes have got. But I don't think too many people have actually bothered in finding out if, you know, the amount of stripes varies. I do think there was a study that was done in either Kenya or Tanzania because all of the new research points to the fact that zebras have stripes to prevent um, tsetse flies from landing on them. They did a, a lot of studies with this particular type of fly which is the carrier of the uh, sleeping sickness and they realized that apparently the more stripes that they've got the less they are interested in to landing on that particular surface. Hello. <laughs> Suzanne, you call them pajama donkeys. <laughs> I think that is probably what they are. If I had such a cool outfit as them, I would probably also never take it off and just wear that. I did have a zebra onesie at once, uh, but then we had to use it for a very big function at the lodge that I was working at, and actually one of the male rangers ended up wearing it. So after that, I just decided that I probably didn't want to wear it anymore. <laughs> 
he was quite sweaty after it. We were doing a whole presentation about what it is to go on safari and why he wore it, I still don't know. But yeah, I wasn't too keen on having it back <laughs> after that. But I do think that the stripes and the spots look better on the actual animal that is supposed to carry them. I think we are quite lucky. We've found a very nice little spot around here, all of them around, and everything seems to be quite peaceful.